What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Ben Romick Cast Strength 2010 Batch 1. Stick around. Okay, so we're looking at the Ben Romick 2010 Cast Strength. This is a pretty new release. It only came out last year in 2021. And I did look at this one's predecessor. I looked at the 2009 release. They put out four batches of that one, and I believe it was the fourth batch that I looked at here on the channel. So conceivably, they'll be putting out a few more batches from the 2010 barrels, but this is the first one. So batch one, 2010. Uh, like almost all, if not all, Ben Romick core range expressions, this one is exclusively matured in first fill casks, and we're looking at bourbon and sherry maturation here. It's an 11 year old whiskey and this particular batch is a bottling from 18 different casks and these cast strength releases tend to do pretty well with whiskey reviewers and whiskey consumers and that makes sense. I've had a few of these myself and I've enjoyed every single one of them. It's good whiskey. Of course it doesn't hurt that it's also cast strength, it's age stated, it's naturally presented so it does have a lot of things going for it. Uh, that being said, people do complain that modern Ben Romics have kind of lost their edge. Uh, I don't quite agree with that. I do kind of see where they're coming from. It used to be a little bit sharper, a little bit punchier, and the newer stuff is rounded and more pretty than it used to be, but that doesn't really bother me. It certainly didn't stop me from enjoying the last couple batches I had from 2009. Ben Romick also have a beautiful 12-year-old cast strength out, although unfortunately for most of you guys, that one's an Asian exclusive. Uh, I enjoy their 10-year-old. I think their 15-year-old is a stunner. The 21 was Okay, um, I've got a bottle of, what am I working on there? That's the, uh, the Contrasts Peach Smoke. That one's not bad too. But yeah, overall, I would say as a brand, they're getting things right. Anyway, as many of you know, I am a sucker for cast strength. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Ben Romick, so this one was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, so yeah, first of the 2010 batches. I'm eager to jump into this one. Let's see how it goes. Let's jump into our review. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a great presentation here. This one comes in at 58.5%. It is gonna be non-chill filtered and our color is natural. So good stuff. All right, so we do have our beautiful natural color there. As for the look, this is always kind of a point of contention. There's a lot of people out there that do not like the new look that Ben Romick adopted a couple years back. I've always said that I'm okay with it, that it doesn't really bother me, but I guess I'm easily influenced. I think a little bit of that hate is starting to rub off on me. I'm not loving this look. Again, I still don't hate it, but I'm just, I'm not very enthused. Uh, we'll give it a three out of five. We have non-chill filtered and natural color here. We have exclusively first fill cask matured. Uh, we have the year of distillation. We have the year of bottling. We have our vintage, we have our badge. So overall, pretty good info here. I can't complain. I did add some water. Let's try our nose. So instantly recognizable here. Uh, you're not going to mistake Ben Romick's house style for a lot of other things. It is very distinctive. Uh, it's sweet. I'm getting a lot of like sweet, jammy berry notes in here. So like strawberries or candied strawberries. Sweet plums, apples. some oranges, some tangerines, there's baklava, cinnamon, nutmeg, there's some praline in here, and some caramelized brown sugar. Now our palate. Oh, big. Uh, there's a sweet and spicy kick up front. Definitely some uh, pepper. Uh, there's a very sweet, rich sherry note in here. We have molasses, plums, vanilla. There's an earthy kind of ginseng note in here, or just a general earthiness, I suppose we can say. Uh, and we have some baking spices. And now our finish. Hmm. Okay, um, more spices. Uh, I'm getting loads of pepper and cinnamon and nutmeg. We have a dark caramel here. 
We have more molasses, we have tobacco leaf, we have leather in here, and there's some apple notes, like definitely apple skin, and then something very faintly sour. So maybe like an apple cider note or even just a little touch of apple vinegar. Uh, this is a long finish. Okay, so this one is as punchy as ever. It's very much on brand for Ben Romick. Uh, and one thing I want to say about Ben Romick, uh, of course, you know, they have a full line. They have different flavors in there, different levels of quality in their whiskey releases. But more than many other brands or many other distilleries out there, Ben Romick has a very distinctive house style that kind of ties all of their whiskeys together. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to word this, but um, we'll put it this way. Ben Romick has a very unique, very distinctive set of flavors. And if I drank too much Ben Romick, which I don't, but if I did, a lot of those flavors would start to taste samey. Uh, for example, right now I've got my 2010, I've got my Contrasts Peat Smoke, I've got the 12 year old Cast Strength, and I have the 15 on the go. And if I'm having like a drinking session, if I've got some friends over, I'll pull these out one at a time. But I don't want to do like a side by side flight of Ben Romics. That doesn't really work. And that's not exclusive to Ben Romick. There are a few brands where that applies, where it's just like you don't want to drink them all side by side because they lose their individuality. They all sort of start blending together. And the thing is, I like doing side by sides. I think they're very interesting. They can be very informative, very enlightening. Um, sure. But they don't always work. I think they do better when they're with more delicate profiles. When they're done from within a single brand that has a very bold, very forward character, like our Ben Romick here, uh, they don't always work out. Uh, and there's plenty of brands where that applies. You know, I think uh, Bowmore, Bowmore is a good example. I don't like doing Bowmore side-by-sides. Uh, Talisker is another one. There's plenty of examples. These are whiskeys where when you have them all together or at the same time, all the flavors start to bleed into one another. And at a certain point, you're just not able to tell what makes any individual bottle different or special. Um, and I guess the point of all of that was to say that I have too many Ben Romics open at this time and I feel like I don't need to have this one open, which is very much a me problem. And it's also very much not a problem. That might be the definition of a first world problem. Oh, I've got too many Ferraris. They don't all fit in my garage. I don't have a Ferrari or a garage. Anyway, this is probably one of the weaker Ben Romics that I have. I do like it better than the Peach Smoke, but I prefer the 15-year-old. I prefer the 12-year-old Cast Strength. And even, you know, this is going off of memory, but I do think I preferred both of the batches from 2009 that I tried. I did try two, and they're both done, but yeah, I do remember liking those more. I feel like this is a little bit closer in character to the regular tin than previous batches in the sense that we have a stronger bourbon influence here. Uh, which of course is not a problem. It's just an observation. We also might have a little bit more bite in the finish But these are pretty minor gripes overall. It's a delicious whiskey. My score is gonna be 87 So it's not quite as good as some previous batches It's not quite as good as a couple of their other releases, but judged on its own merits. Listen, it is a really good whiskey It's forward. It's punchy. We have the house style on full display here it may be a little bit less refined than I was expecting, but no, it's really good. I'm enjoying this one. So if you're already a Ben Romick fan, this one shouldn't disappoint. It's got all the signatures, all the hallmarks that we'd expect from the brand. Of course, everything is cranked up because it's cast strength. Uh, and while this one doesn't impress me as much as some previous releases have, it's still excellent stuff. It goes down a tree. So I'm very lucky. We have a Cast Strength 12 year old that's available here in Asia. That one is a little bit older and it's also cheaper. So that's an easy buy for me. And I do prefer to this one um, with regards to the 15. I know a lot of people out there don't like that the regular line comes in at 43% ABV, but I do think the 15 is a better whiskey for the money. But if you're outside of Asia and I know that most of my viewers are and you want a cask strength option from the brand, I would still say seek out the 2009 vintages first. I do think those were better, but if you can't find them, this one is still an excellent fallback. You know what? I'm coming down too hard on it. It's good stuff. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe, and I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Ben Romick 2010 Batch 1? 
how would you compare it to previous patches if you've tried them? And finally, down in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.